Hello and welcome to this clip looking at cyclic esters. So in this short clip we're going to have a look at some of the structures that commonly come up in A-level examinations. Um, the reason for this is because exam boards at A-level, they like asking you about esters by giving you unusual looking structures that you won't have come across before. So what they're doing is really testing out your deduction and your resilience under exam conditions to try and help you push towards the higher grade boundaries that you're looking for. So this is an example of straightforward esterification. So it's clear what the reactants are. You can see the ester functional group produced in both versions of the equation, the displayed version and also the structural version. And furthermore, you can see where the H2O is removed and where it's made as a side product. However, what if we start making it a bit more complicated? So we have an ester group that's there. The thing about this is it's attached to a ring structure instead of being a bridge between two straight chains. So the kind of thing you'd be asked about is to deduce what would happen when this is hydrolyzed. So let's give it a go. So why not pause the clip and see if you can work out what the products might be from those two hydrolyses. So, um, you end up with a single product formed in each case instead of two separate products like the textbook would suggest for normal esterification. But there's two functional groups in each molecule if you look quite closely. So you've got 4-hydroxypentanoic um, acid with acid hydrolysis, so you recreate the carboxylic acid and the um, alcohol group. And with the, uh, the alkaline hydrolysis, you get a carboxylate salt and an alcohol, just like you would have done if it was a straight chain ester. So let's now look at some other examples. So here's an example of uh, a straight chain carboxylic acid, hydroxy carboxylic acid, um, being turned into a cyclic ester because it esterifies with itself. So this is essentially what we talked about in the last slide. So there's a couple of things to try underneath. So pause the tip again and see if you can work these out. So the name of the acid is 5-hydroxypentanoic acid. You obviously count from the carbon that is the COOH group, that's carbon number one, and you count along. And uh, in that particular structure, there's more surface area over which London forces can take place. But what's also happening is you've got hydrogen bonding occurring both at the alcohol functional group and at the carboxylic acid functional group. Okay, so now let's have a look at a couple of examples of how this might come up in an exam. So apologies, the scan hasn't come through very well, um, so I've put down what each of the parts of the question actually ask you. It says lactic acid can be dimerized to produce the compound shown. And it asks you to write a balanced equation for the dimerization of lactic acid. So earlier on in this question, they would have told you that lactic acid is 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. So um, now what we've got to do is think about how that structure can be produced from 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. So as it stands, without too much thought, the question allows us to write this. It's clearly not the full balanced equation, but let's look at the structure a bit more closely. So by counting from the C double bond O as your first carbon, just like you would in a normal carboxylic acid, it's quite easy to deduce that you actually need two um, lactic acid molecules to make one of this particular compound. And because each esterification removes one water molecule, there must have been two of them happening because you have two, um, two lactic acid molecules involved. You should hopefully end up with something like that. So now let's have a quick look at the mark scheme and see how we did. So it looks like what we put matches what the, the mark scheme wants us to do. Notice that they have a molecular formula on the right hand side 
Um, in an exam, normally, you can do any type of formula. But the really important thing to do is make sure it's unambiguous. So let's now try one more before we um, finish up. So this question is about something called succinic acid. So succinic acid will also dimerize, just like lactic acid does. Um, but it gives a product with the molecular formula C4H4O3. So the first thing to notice about this is it's not a hydroxycarboxylic acid like lactic acid in the previous question. So it's a double carboxylic acid, and they're asking you to end up with a formula of C4H4O3. So the formula of this compound is C4H6O4. So obviously what happens is you take away a water molecule, which gives you uh, C4H4O3, and obviously H2O. So a little check of the mark scheme. So if we quickly check the structure that uh, is found in the mark scheme, we can see that we're in the right place. So hopefully this now gives you a bit of confidence to go away and try some of these more applied examples. So until next time, thanks for listening, thanks for your time, and see you soon.